If we look at the needs of the world for decarbonizing the energy system, we can see that about 75% of the carbon emissions from the world can be achieved through relatively low cost means, whether renewables or other means of uh, reduction of CO2. However, beyond that 75%, costs escalate dramatically. And these are the hard to decarbonize sectors. Sectors such as heat, industries such as cement and steel, uh, which emit large amounts of CO2. Renewables will be very costly to utilize in the decarbonization of those industries. So you see a five-fold cost increase to go with a renewables displacement of existing plants, or we can retrofit with carbon capture and sequestration and uh, reduce that cost, capture that CO2. Yes, there is a cost, but it's much lower. And that's the case for CCUS. We cannot achieve net zero without having uh, carbon capture at a large scale. So today there is less than 50 million tons of projects globally. Uh, most of these are concentrated in the US and North America, in the Gulf states, Saudi Arabia and UAE, as well as in a few countries in Australia and Norway. By 2030, the estimation is we need to actually move to more than 1 billion ton. So we have to increase more than 20 times in just seven or eight years. So it's a very difficult challenge. The UK has got a plan to get five to 10% of its total country emissions through carbon capture by 2030 into what we call the 20 to 30 megaton of CO2 emissions. So rapid time which will start to really get into material scale decarbonization. Yeah, so you know, we think we'll be the next vanguard of scale contribution. So the challenge is that this is a cost. All the decarbonization, all of the net zero initiatives globally are actually a cost. They are a cost above the market price of the existing energy system. For example, electric vehicles are more expensive than internal combustion engines. For that reason, governments provide incentives, uh, similarly for renewables. Now, renewables have become competitive with fossil fuels, but for many years, they required a supplement to be able to be competitive. Uh, in the same way, it's cheaper to emit a CO2 than it is to capture it and sequester it. So today, the carbon capture industry is growing quickly, uh, and that's because of uh, mandates or taxation or incentives, such as the Inter Inflation Reduction Act in the US. In the kingdom, for example, we are uh, uh, proceeding with one of the world's largest projects, 9 million tons. And of course, that's with the support of the Saudi government. I think we have a big job ahead of us. One is the business model isn't really working. It's too dependent on subsidies or government schemes. We should look to see how could we develop market mechanisms to allow carbon capture to happen and to develop. Another thing is that we need to have an acceptance among society at large that, yeah, this is something that we like and we trust and we welcome. And then there are some geographies that's more suited for carbon capture and storage and where it would play a bigger part. Key areas would be China, India, the US, and importantly, the, the Gulf region. Now, here you have large industrial clusters with um, high concentration of CO2 emissions. So you have fertilizer plants, chemical plants, cement factories, and those are the easiest and lowest cost opportunities to capture CO2 and store it. So there's two types of storage. There is uh, a former you know, oil and gas reservoir. So methane and natural gas has been stored for millions of years in here. And we, as that is depleted, we can replace that with CO2. So wherever you see gas production, today in particular, is a natural place that can have that storage. There's also uh, saline aquifers, which are more present, um, but that is a lesser known technology today, lesser known reservoirs. Uh, but we in the UK will be developing one of ours in our first wave of deployment to then prove that technology at scale and at cost. And then other parts around the world will, will be able to have more confidence that their geology can work as well, not just where oil and gas is found today. Carbon credit offset could support the economics of all of these projects. Talking about green hydrogen or uh, direct air capture, all of these which is related again to carbon capture and storage would create a carbon credit offset, which would be an enabler to the economics of each and every project. 
currently the cost of these projects is very expensive and it's uneconomic. So without these markets, the cost wouldn't be, the cost revenue model and the equilibrium wouldn't be achieved.